Some people ask why a man like myself, a man of culture, would come to the city of Amsterdam on holiday. Is it for the sightseeing? Is it for the museums, the locals, the food? Well, I'm a little bit of a lad myself. A huge lad, in fact. And I come for the booze, the drinks, the, the, the gange, and the nightlife is pretty incredible. Let's have a look. Let's take a look. It gets a little bit busier later on. It's kind of early still. I have a question. Okay, all right. Uh, let's just say, hypothetically, uh, you were to be going away to a different country on holiday, a different country to your own, across the sea, by plane, by boat, whatever. Uh, but a little problem arose uh, there was a a little smidgen of of a global pandemic. What you do? Well, ain't you in for a treat of me explaining that only being able to watch BBC One and BBC Two in your hotel room is quite painful. Well, hello everyone. How are we doing? It's been a little while. It's been like five or six weeks. I hope everyone's doing well in these trying times. I got two new puppies, hence why I've been so busy recently, because they are a little bit of a handful. I'd, I'd bring them in to show you in the video. Uh, but they're locked in a room, and the only way to unlock the door to that room is by getting this video 500 likes. I don't know if we've ever hit 500 likes before, but you've got to do it, otherwise those puppies are just stuck in there. And that's on you, really. That's got, that's got nothing to do with me. So my girlfriend Lily's birthday is in January, and this year her brother bought her a trip to Amsterdam with one other lucky person. Unfortunately, they were busy, so I came along instead. Her brother loves geography, he loves the city, so he thought we would love it too. Bought us flights, accommodation, it was super nice, and I kind of think he still blames himself for what happened. It's okay. It's a global pandemic. So we woke up at 2.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, ready to go to the airport to fly out to Amsterdam. Now, I guess this part is only for future reference for people watching in like two years, hopefully just going, oh yeah, remember that time where for like a month we stayed indoors and then this virus just disappeared? I'm kind of hoping that's the case. At the moment, we are approaching the peak of the uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19, which has swept the entire world, and we don't know how to stop it. Now, we heard that everything was pretty fine in Amsterdam. Uh, the Netherlands hadn't really been hit by it too badly, and one of Lily's friends, who had been a couple days prior, said that everything was pretty much fine, just a couple of museums like the Anne Frank House and the Van Gogh Museum were closed due to large amounts of people wanting to be in these places at one time. A clever idea. Now, obviously, this deeply saddened us because you can probably tell that I am a man of culture. It's got a belly button. So after getting up to the airport, getting through security and everything, flying and then getting back through the other side, getting to our hotel, it was about 9 a.m. by the time we actually got into the center of Amsterdam. Now, obviously, it wasn't as busy as I assume it usually is because of the virus. Some people kind of wary about going out or going on holiday, but it was still kind of busy and the city seemed to be functioning as per usual. We explored the canals, all the little side streets. It was real cute. We passed a bunch of uh, coffee shops. I winked because they sell weed. We found ourselves in a cheese shop where there was like 5,000 wheels of cheese. And yes, I did pretend I was going to buy a lot of it so I could try lots of different samples. I bought some at the airport after. It's pretty, it's pretty much the same. I bought a hat. Wow. Do you want to see it? Ah, I'm not really going to show it you. Got ya. You got a reaction at you, you've got to give him that. At Lily's brother's recommendation, we ate at a place called Walk to Go. Walk. Uh, it's noodles and it tastes good. We got to a place called Dam Square and if you've been to Amsterdam, you'll know that's where Madame Two Swords is. There's like a statue, there's this building that apparently kings and queens go into. I don't know what that's called. Some people say it's like a car stall or something, but I don't know. And then there's a big group of people just waiting behind the tram line and we were like, should we have walked past them? Like, there's a huge space where no one is in the middle, and then a bunch of police came around and, like, made a big circle and weren't letting people walk through it. The, the hot dog stand shut for business for, like, ten minutes, and an air ambulance just came out of nowhere, and here's a cool video of that. <laughs> I sent a video to the band chat, just for shits and gigs, I guess, and Jack and Callum started making Lego City jokes, saying a man had fallen into the river in Amsterdam City, and uh, then we found out that that's exactly what had happened. Hey! 
Hey! We then decided to go to the famous red light district. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a couple of streets in Amsterdam city center where there's windows where women just dance half naked in it and they invite you in and you pay by the half hour or whatever to have sexual favors and things like that. There's sex shops, sex museums, the probably actual sexual intercourse too. I, that didn't actually cross my mind. But what we found kind of alarming is that although they have to check to your uh, at least 18 years old to go into the coffee shops to buy and smoke weed, uh, you only have to be 16 years old to, to visit the red light district and get a hand job. Now the red light district was weird because it was the daytime so I guess there wasn't much going on anyway but it was also quite quiet because of the coronavirus and there was actually some ladies just on their phones just like whatever you can buy time if you want. I mean I don't know if that's like a regular thing of I'm playing hard to get but it's probably like well, there's 20 people on the street. May as well just play some Tetris whilst I'm here. There was some sex workers probably behind the glass like and then there was others just like We did the classic go into some of the sex shops to go hee 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 look at that penis one of the ladies in there said is it still fun out there or is it is it dead and we're like i don't know we've, we've literally been here for a few hours we don't know it any different and that's when she said well i heard that they're going to be closing some of the red light district tomorrow which kind of concerned us a little bit but we thought hey we've already looked around whatever so this actually turned out to be a little bit more drastic than we thought uh, but I'll get to that after. So we went back to our hotel room. We've been up since like 2.30 in the morning. So we were pretty tired. And we even contemplated just sleeping and not even going out for food that night. So after a little rest, we went back out. We bought a tram ticket that lasted 48 hours. We got the tram downtown to near a place called Kebabi, which is a vegan kebab place. I'm vegetarian, Liddy's vegan. And so we thought it'd be a good place to eat. And when we got there, it was very dark. And there was like three people sat in there drinking at the bar and it looked like they'd closed shop for the night. Now Kebab is like a little side restaurant thing to a chain in Amsterdam called Vegan Junk Food Bar. So we went around the corner, thought, well, at least we can still eat at the, the actual Vegan Junk Food Bar. And we went in, the lights were all on, and there was a bunch of people wearing orange waiting outside on bikes, which confused us a little bit. Didn't even consider the fact it may be like a takeaway service. So we walked into the junk food bar and there's one lady in the kitchen just cooking up shit. Luckily, almost everyone speaks English in Amsterdam. We are lazy. It's sad. So I said, oh, excuse me, are you open? Because there was no one else in there. And it was kind of loud because of everything going on. And I couldn't really hear what she said apart from takeout only. So we're like, shit, we've come all this way here. And we came out. We thought, well... We'll go to another one because there's like three in the city and we started walking up this road and we thought we'll go to the next tram stop and, and get on it there and go to the next one. As we're walking up this downtown area, like everything is closed, all the cafes, restaurants, shops. I mean, it was mostly apartments down there, but we thought it's kind of weird that these places are shut. But then we thought, oh, it's Sunday night. Of course they're shutting girly. It makes sense. And we walked past this big queue of people who are waiting to get inside a coffee shop, which was closed. And we didn't really think much of it apart from why are all those people there? It's kind of odd. We get a little further up the road and this girl uh, comes past us talking English on the phone saying, I'm going to get 20 grams for her and 30 grams for me. Now, if you heard any of the news about Amsterdam that's being reported over here in the UK or I guess maybe America too, about what happened on that night, you'll probably already know what it was. <laughs> So we get further into the city and we take a cute picture next to a fountain. I was really hungry at this point and we were like, oh, should we just go back? Because it seems like quite a jaunt and everything's probably shutting if that one's shut as well. I saw a Burger King and I was like, oh man, I'm so hungry. But we can't really eat a Burger King, even though they do a vegan burger. They cook it in meat juice. We saw this place called Fibo, which is like a little chain thing. I don't know if it's across all of the Netherlands, but there's a few in Amsterdam. And it's really cool. It's like rows of little ovens like this, kind of like microwaves. And you put the money in and a little door opens and you just take this little pastry thing or whatever on a, on a little paper plate. It's the coolest shit ever. So I went in there and I got this little cheese thing. And they've got a main counter so you can get fries and order burgers and stuff. Uh, but that was all closed off and it said takeaway only. So you can only get these things out of these little ovens. So I, I took one and then Lily wanted to go into this Albert Hein, which is their like Tesco Express. And like, all the shelves of any kind of vegan food were emptied. And we thought, well, whatever, we'll, we'll just carry on walking through the city. 
We'll get the tram back and then see what we can do. Whilst we were outside Fibo, I heard a local talking to some visitors saying something like they're closing everything tomorrow. And I didn't really know what was going on. So we got on the tram and to try not to alarm Lily, I looked on my phone and thought, I'm just going to have a look before I say anything. And from what I could make out on Google, which had been translated to Dutch and I couldn't translate back, that they were trying to close everything until the end of March. About a minute later, we get a phone call off Lily's brother saying that the Dutch government made an announcement that to try and combat the spread of COVID-19, that they were shutting all shops, restaurants, pubs, cafes, museums, churches, like everything until the end of March. And we had been there less than 12 hours. Okay, so we got back to the hotel thinking, oh fuck, what are we gonna do? If they are going on a lockdown in the city, are they gonna start closing the borders and things? And we started panicking a little bit. We tried looking on the news to find out more and realized that the big queue of people outside the closed coffee shop were trying to get their fix of weed to last until the end of March. And the lady with the trolley was getting 20 grams for her friend and 30 grams for her. That's a lot of fucking weed. It seemed to make the news over here that literally like every coffee shop had a big line coming out of it because everyone was panicking and wondering what they're gonna do. I mean, it didn't really matter because the next day the coffee shops announced that they were doing takeaways of weed. So we get back to the hotel. It's been a really long day. We traveled all this way to get food. We couldn't couldn't find food for Lily on the way back. A family on the phone saying, listen, if you need to come back, we'll, we'll just get you flights, whatever we do. We just don't want you stuck in the country. They were like, listen, no one's gonna know anything. It's too early to tell. So why don't you just go to sleep and we'll, we'll look into things in the morning. It'd been a long ass day. We'd been awake for like 20 hours. We thought, fine, we'll just, we'll just go to sleep and wake up. Tomorrow's a new day. And we went to go to sleep and our neighbors in the hotel had arrived back probably after finding out that he couldn't drink or smoke because everything was shut. We were in the very last room in the hotel on the seventh floor, room 735, and next door to us was a very loud group of northerners, also from the UK. At first they came back and they were just talking loudly and we thought, you know, whatever, we'll just turn the TV up. But then they start slamming doors and, and shouting and throwing shit around. And then I think they had some friends down the corridor. So they kept coming up to their room and like slamming on the door really hard. And then they started slamming on our door as well and getting the two doors mixed up. And that's when we realized they were probably pretty fucked. Not only can you smoke weed in Amsterdam, you can also do mushrooms. Now they were shouting for hours and just slamming doors really hard to the point that it sounded like someone was in our room literally like smacking the wall with a baseball bat. It was that fucking loud. So we're trying to drift off to sleep and every time we get a little bit close, we just hear they're bringing up bags full of beers and like slinging them around you just hit glass clanking all over the place oh my god and then the icing on the cake was when they started smoking and because we shared the same ventilation system as their room our room fucking stank of cigarettes all night we kept opening the window but it stank so bad and they were shouting and slamming doors still and we're like what the fuck is going on next door now it got to around like half 11 ish midnight and I fell asleep eventually and then got woken up again by someone slamming really hard. I think maybe on our door or their door. I really couldn't tell. It sounded like our door because it was so loud. Listen, I know Amsterdam is like a party city, but because obviously all the places that they were going to party in were closed, they just took it to the hotel room and we were like, bitch, I've been awake for 22 hours. I'm done with this shit. I phoned reception. I was like, hi, we're in, we're in room 735 and... The people next door in room 733 are, are um, they're slamming doors, uh, they're smoking, and they're shouting a lot. I'm just wondering, you know, if there's anything you can do about that. And the guy's like, oh, I'm really sorry about that, I'll, I'll, I'll come up right away. And then he hung up the finger phone and came upstairs. A couple minutes go by and we hear a little... on our door. Lily opens the door, and it's the guy from front desk and says, uh, We've just had a complaint uh, from one of the rooms about noise coming from your room. We were like, okay, no, it was us who complained, it's next door. So the guy goes next door, and of course they've heard him knocking and saying this, and they must have just chucked the cigarette outside, and they just went silent, and, and he talked to them, and he came back and said, okay, so I've spoken to them, and um, I couldn't hear any noise, um, and I couldn't find any cigarette, but it did smell of smoke in there. We were like, well, yeah, they've obviously just gotten rid of the cigarette. 
like if we can hear every word they're saying in their hotel room, they could hear exactly what he said to us. And they're like, well, someone's complained about us. Let's just cut this shit out straight away and pretend it wasn't us. In fact, earlier on in the hallway, we could hear one of them going, it stinks out here. It stinks because it fucking stank of cigarettes. In fact, the next morning we walked down like probably half the corridor and you could still smell it from their room. And he said, well, in about two minutes time, it's going to be 1230 and that's when our no noise policy kicks in. Like, that was gonna stop them. So they quieted down for a while, which we were glad about, but we opened a window still because it stank of smoke. And we managed to get to sleep for a bit, when at about 1am, a guy came on our door, started slamming on it. I'm just assuming one of them got real pissed off that we complained about them, and just wanted to raise some hell. And we hear one of them going, Chris! Chris, don't! No, come on, don't bother! I fucking drag them away in the hall, and you just hear very loud, drunk, northern people just scurrying off down the hallway. And that was it for the rest of the night, luckily. So next morning, we're getting ready. Luckily, I'm dressed already when we get a, a, a knock on the door. More of a slam again. I open the door, and there's a woman like this. Emma! Emma! You're not Emma! No, I'm not Emma. Emma! Emma must be next door! Sorry! Yeah, I, th I think she probably is next door. Alright! Alright! You know in Monty Python when that guy is like an arrow shape? Like, she was kind of stood like that. They were fucked, and we thought, oh my god, please don't be staying another night. But luckily, she's shouting at a friend that they got 15 minutes. They already told you we got 15 minutes to leave. And we thought, Please mean that's leaving the hotel for good and luckily it did because we went out to the shop the next morning because we thought well if we can't eat anywhere we're gonna have to get food in from the shops before they get ransacked. I came back to the hotel like an hour later and there was a guy outside coughing his fucking lungs up like this. He was actually stood like this going <coughs> <coughs> and he was with two really scruffy looking people. I'm pretty sure one of them was the one who came to our door and they were speaking and they had a northern accent. I thought that's got to be them. We walked into the actual hotel lobby and there was a sofa with like six of them looking rough as hell, like absolutely hanging with bags waiting there. We went upstairs thinking, please let that be them and please say they're leaving. Seventh floor, by the way, we were on the seventh floor. We opened our window to get some fresh air in and we could hear him just talking shit outside there. Like... <sighs> No wonder people hate the British, man. So that day, we didn't really have too many options of what we could do. We just thought, well, we'll wait it out. We're already here. I guess it's going to be a nice getaway. And it'd be really cool to explore Amsterdam with, like, no one here. So we got the free ferry to NDSM, not to be confused with BDSM. That's the red light district. It's really weird. They have a bunch of ferries, like, every 15 minutes going across this big body of water for free. And people just cycle on and cycle off. And they don't pay anything. And it runs till, like, 3 in the morning. Look, my buses end at like seven. It was pretty cool over there. It just felt like a completely different place. It was like an old dock converted into places it was like a few hotels and an industrial warehouse area that had been fitted with shops and cafes and bars and things like that. Unfortunately, of course, we couldn't go in any of them because they were all closed because of the virus. I think if maybe we'd gone the day after, some of them might have been open, but because it was the first day, they were all panicking, thinking, well, I guess we've got to close and not do anything. There was one cafe open when we first got there and there was benches outside and we thought, well, we'll take the opportunity. We went in, we went to go get a drink and she says, Oh, in case you wanted to sit outside, you can't. It's illegal. Out, out there, just... Yeah, it's illegal. But they're just benches. It's illegal. So we didn't sit out there, so instead we found a bench next to Sexyland. Where are we? We're in the home of the free. And the land of the sacred. We walked around, found some cool artwork, graffiti, things like that. We found a business called Emo Life. We both took a picture outside the sign that said Emo Life. And when Lily was taking my picture, she was telling me to hurry up because a woman actually came up to the glass, wondering why the fuck we were taking pictures of each other outside of her office. We found out that we could get takeout delivered to the hotel, so we still got food from Vegan Junk Food Bar, which was sick. Ah, uh, it was so good. I had like a chicken and bacon burger. Obviously it wasn't real chicken and bacon, and please don't start this thing in the comments where they're like You can't call it chicken if it's not really chicken, it shouldn't be allowed Because if you really have an issue with people calling vegetarian sausages Sausages, because they're not meat, then you really probably need some different hobbies or just just care about something in the world You maybe someone needs to hug you. What are we gonna call them? Meatless longies? 
I don't know. The food was really good, but I was coming down with a bit of a temperature and felt nauseous, which was worrying. I haven't had any symptoms of the virus since then, uh, so I kind of just put it down to the fact of how anxious I was at the fact we may have been stuck in Amsterdam for the foreseeable future. Now, of course, most people would say, oh, that's really cool, you're in Amsterdam, you can smoke weed and drink and, and get sex, but... Everything was closed and we were gonna get kicked out of a hotel in about two days time There was an announcement from the Dutch president that basically just said they were just gonna carry on with everything closed and hope that it would mean more people would self-isolate things like that I guess day three we were well rested because we didn't have those horrible neighbors next door anymore We went to Jordan to see the Anne Frank house. It's kind of uneventful when it's not open it's just a house. We explored the streets a little bit more because we'd gone to NDSM like the whole day, the day before, and hadn't really gone back into the city centre, just assuming that everything was shut. But that's when we found out that some shops, like gift shops and things, are actually still open. We went into this one, and there was an Egyptian guy running it, and he said, listen, I'll give you a discount today because you're brave enough to come out despite the coronavirus. So out of the stuff that Liddy had picked, he gave her one of the things for free, and then said, are you not buying anything? And I was like, no, I'm good. And he gave me a free magnet. I guess buying stuff from a gift shop during a pandemic is worthy of a magnet. What is this song? This song got a summer. We got back to Dam Square and my hopes and dreams were made up as Lily spotted in the corner of her eye a fresh Stroop waffle shop and it was open. It was open! Ever since Lily's brother came back from Amsterdam last year, he brought back a pack of Stroop waffles. I tried one and my life was changed. But I'd heard they made really good fresh ones in the city and we couldn't find any bakeries that did them. They just did normal waffles and cakes and things like that. And the night before, Lily said, oh, maybe tomorrow we can find a place to get you a fresh Stroop waffle. And then we both went, oh, and we got a little bit sad. But then we found somewhere. Woo! Oh man, it was so good. She made it fresh there and then, and then I put white chocolate on it for me. Here's a picture of me holding it with my apparently very feminine hand. It was big. I bought a pack of five more to bring home with me. We then went to Vondel Park, which is just this real nice, huge park where there's so many people cycling everywhere because Apparently there's more bikes than people in Amsterdam. I'm not kidding. It is literally ran on cycling Probably for every car you see in Amsterdam. There's about 50 cyclists. I'm not even kidding. They have the right of way <laughs> So there's hundreds of people just cycling and rollerblading through this park and there was dogs playing everywhere We saw this statue that was built after Picasso artwork, which is cool A dog came up to us and let us pet it. We were the chosen ones for that split second. It was real nice, and considering how quiet the city was, like how much of a weird ghost town it was, there were so many people in Vondel Park, and I'd hate to know how busy it is when there's not a lockdown in the city. Luckily, the flower market was open still because Lily really wanted to go. Uh, we then found out that pretty much every single flower shop in the market is exactly the same. They all just had the exact same stock, little clog key rings, and then just loads of merch with weed on it. It was really tacky, and we didn't buy a single thing. We also found a Christmas shop. I guess on a, a lockdown where they're like, don't open any shops, the Christmas shop does have to open. I felt teased as we saw a sign saying Lego shop, only five minutes walk away and thought, well, that's gonna be closed. It's kind of like a bit of a meme that whenever me and Lily go to a city and there's a Lego shop, I have to go in and just like breathe up against the glass of all the Lego and go, this is so cool, like I, I wanna buy it all. And although I have money, I still leave without buying any of it because I'm an adult and I have to spend that money on boring things like life. I miss being a child. <laughs> but to our surprise, the Lego shop was open and we didn't go in because there was like seven staff all stood in a circle waiting for someone to walk in. And I didn't want the first person to walk in in like four hours to be a 20 year old who had no intentions of actually buying anything. Just the idea of me running in like Lego and all these staff just standing there like, is this guy okay? Now we noticed by Tuesday there was hardly any English people left in the city because I think most of them actually flew home because they were worried about the same things as us, except we didn't really have the money to fly home. We went back to the hotel, got more food from the vegan junk food bar. This time I got this like huge ass burger and here is a video of me trying to attempt to eat it. Oh damn baby, that's tasty. <laughs>
as I was coming back upstairs with a takeout bag, I got in the same lift as a guy from Vancouver who asked when we were leaving. We were both leaving the next day. Unfortunately, he'd had to cut his holiday short by three weeks. And I assume he'd been traveling from city to city. As he said, the last place he was in, he was the one and only person still in the hotel. And he was at breakfast and just had loads of staff around him just like, be our guest, be our guest. <laughs> I don't really know the song. But then he dropped this bombshell of knowledge on me that he'd asked one of the staff members and we were two of 20 people left in the entire hotel. There were 735 rooms and only 13 of those rooms were still in use. Just like every tourist left the city the second they could after the announcement of the lockdown. So that was kind of crazy. That's the dogs barking saying, please like the video. We need 500 likes to be let out. This is when it gets like 25 likes and you guys are actually gonna be worried about my dogs. And so the whole experience was bittersweet. We enjoyed our time there and it was nice to be away. In fact, it was our first time in our three and a half years of being together that we actually went away without other family or friends there. And it kind of felt like a free demo version of Amsterdam, like just walking around going, oh, look at that. We should go there next time. Oh, that's nice. We definitely want to go again. There's so much we'd, we'd love to do there. And it was real nice still, though. It was like a once in a lifetime opportunity being able to walk around the city when it's so dead. And I think we're one of very few amounts of people who ever have that chance. Unless everyone dies. What a cheery note to end on. But we were worried about our flight being canceled because as you can see from this departure board, 28 out of 31 flights that day had been canceled. When I checked online the day before, like none of the flights to the UK had been canceled, but this list included London, Birmingham, Newcastle, I was kind of worried. On the way there, we'd flown in a plane, which was like probably about 80% full. There was some people who didn't come because of the virus. But on the way back, there was like 40 of us on this, I don't know, 300 person capacity plane. It was crazy. And I heard someone talking to the cabin crew and they were explaining that most of their flights in the moment were just rescue missions to try and get people back from countries that they were stuck in and their borders were closing. It's so weird that something like this just brings the world to a complete standstill. But you look at China, and they're like opening their borders again and just carrying on with life as usual. They're like shutting down all the temporary hospitals they built and it's so weird that that's happened there and it was pretty much contained and now it's leaked into this world and everyone else is like, oh fuck. But despite everything that happened, Amsterdam was real nice and I enjoyed myself. We both loved it and we love to go back. Maybe when there's no global pandemic. Thank you everybody for watching the video. I've been Brody, otherwise known as Knockout Wolf. I hope you've enjoyed. Remember to leave a like, otherwise my dogs are stuck in that room for the foreseeable future. I will see you in the next one. Maybe subscribe. Please? Who's that Pokemon?